Good evening, everybody. Welcome into Coach's Corner East. We are at the Pizza Hut in Galleon on this Wednesday, the 7th of September. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend as we get ready to head into week four of the high school football season. We'll talk about that this evening. Show brought to you in part by Don Barron Associates at the Galleon Building and Loan Bank, Matt Studer at Spitzer Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Kia, one mile east of the Richmond Mall, Mark Osborne and Associates at Ukraine International, serving worldwide markets from the Galleon Industrial Park. A little later on tonight's show, it'll be uh, Ryan Eshelman, assistant coach at Crestline, filling in for Michael Winland as the Bulldogs still trying to find especially consistency on the offense to score some points, hopefully get a win here real soon. It'll be Jake Bruner and the Colonel Crawford Eagles fresh off a, a final non-conference win down at uh, East Knox and getting ready to enter league play in the Northern 10 Conference undefeated. We'll talk to them and to start our show as we do each and every week, it's the Galleon portion of tonight's show and it's Matt Dick. Uh, Coach Dick, welcome to the show and congratulations, first win of the year. Oh, thank you. And you go over to Upper Sandusky and you get a big win, 28 to seven. Uh, you're now one and two heading into uh, MOAC play. And certainly uh, it, was a, it was a challenging week, a difficult week uh, emotionally, but uh, maybe that played into it a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think our kids did a great job of rallying around the loss of Cooper McCabe. Uh, their family was a part of getting ready for pregame. They came out and hugged every kid. It was very, very emotional. Uh, in the locker room, we talked about you know how important uh, mental toughness and emotional toughness is and how we have to control that on Friday night. And our kids did a great job of it. And uh, just to, to find a way to win after a week like we had uh, was impressive. And our kids had a great response. And our community did too. Uh, our community came you know from everywhere to support the McCabe's and support football and uh, we're really blessed to live in this community yeah it's, a, it's an interesting thing because I think uh, you know when tragedy strikes and not just necessarily a, a sports person or something like that uh, but it's kind of interesting how other schools are you know even though it's rivals those barriers and those lines kind of drop and everybody uh, jumps in to uh, to support and that's a beautiful thing uh, and, and as a coach I mean you have to deal with a lot of things injuries you know, if the kid, kids' heads in the game, you know, uh, motivating, is this harder, is something like this harder, or is it just part of the job? Yeah, I think I was told by, uh, I think it was uh, Birchfield, who said, as a head coach, you're going to deal with two horrible things every week. And if you have that mindset, then uh, weeks are pretty good. If you don't have that mindset, then you have some hard ones. Last week was a hard week. It was a hard week to be a head coach. It was a hard week to be a guy and football player. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we got through it together, and I'm proud of the way we handled it. Very good. Well, let's talk about the game. Uh, Braxton Prosser, who's here tonight to Gabe Ivey, also here tonight. 49-yard touchdown pass to open the scoring late in the first quarter. Then Prosser uses his legs to put the Tigers up 14 to nothing midway through the second quarter with a 35-yard scamper. Upper responds rather quickly, as they can with their quarterback, uh, pretty dynamic quarterback, as Caden Holman hits Evan Hill for a 26-yard strike, and you lead at halftime 14-7. to And had to feel pretty good about that point going into the locker room, up a, a score. Probably didn't like that late one, though, for Upper, did you? Yeah, well, I can tell you, you know, right before half, uh, you know, our O-line, uh, we just had one guy missing. And it wasn't the same guy. It was a different guy every week. And uh, you know, our guards were pulled a little slow. I think that really hurt our offense. But uh, a lot of different guys making a lot of mental errors, which is expected. We, we haven't had a lot of great weeks of practice. Mm -hmm. um, but right before halftime, our defense did make a stop. They could have scored another and tied it up. We made that stop. And I was like, hey, we got to be positive. You know, and, and if we didn't make that stop, we probably would have been all over them. But uh, we made it, and that helped with momentum. We came out, got another defensive stop, and uh, then the game started to change, and stuff started to open up a little bit better. Uh, but we're still working on being gaps down, and we worked it really hard this week and uh, had a great week of practice. I'm excited to see, uh, once we've had a good week of practice, what that looks like on Friday night. Yeah, how it translates on the field. Ironically, no scoring in the third quarter. That's a little unusual uh, to go a whole quarter without any scoring on either side. But you put the game away in the fourth as Gabe Ivey continues a special night has uh, runs of three yards and an 89 yard run to uh, finish up 28 to 7. Braxton Prosser 9 of 23 for 101 yards through the air one TD one pick also ran the ball uh, 14 times 89 yards and a touchdown Gabe 13 carries 122 yards two TDs one receiving uh, for 49 yards and a TD and Jackson Hart can't leave him out special 
teams are important for PATs, and he nailed an onside kick. Uh, how, how impressed have you been with him so far this year and what he's done as a soccer player, but also coming on and helping you guys out as well? Yeah, Jack Hart's done a great job. He shows up to practice. Heck, he runs sprints with the guys and fills in any way he can. He's been a really good teammate, and he's a heck of a kicker. We've had a long line of those, and uh, we got a guy, Dom Pittman, comes back and uh, right. does some uh, extra one-on-one -on -one help with him, uh, and we're just lucky to have that line going. Hopefully, we'll keep it going for a long time. Uh, 227 yards rushing for the Tigers, 111 passing, uh, 338 total. You pleased with that uh, kind of that split? You want to be a little more run, uh, leaning on the run rather than pass? Are you happy with that? No, I thought we played horrible offensively. I don't hide behind that. I think our quarterback had some uh, series where he just was off, and mm -hmm. I think it missed some open throws. Uh, and we talked about, you know, sometimes you only get one shot. It doesn't matter which quarterback's in. You get one shot, and I can tell you this guy's going to be wide open, but you still got to drop back and you got to throw that ball. And it sounds easy, but it's really, really hard sometimes. Okay. And the next shot, you know, the defense is going to change. So I think we missed way too me opportunities that way and then up front our O-line just didn't play at the level that uh, we expect and again we'll take it any way we could last week but this week we have some real high hopes and we uh, had a great week of practice and I'm excited what our office can look like uh, when we execute like we're capable of. Knowing coming in uh, that Holman is a pretty doggone good quarterback and upper wants to sling the ball around they only rushed for eight yards but threw for 269 277 total but they had five turnovers and uh, do you think that was uh, a huge difference in the game? Well I think anytime you have Landon Kirk at defensive end and Landon Campbell and Lincoln Tyrell. Those guys are pretty dynamic D-line. Uh, move some guys around to get that. And, uh, you know, they're sacrificing. You know, some of those guys would probably make better linebackers, but they do what's best for the team. And that, that core group of D-line, they just fly around, they hit people, uh, and they take pride. And, you know, they're playing, you know, Cooper McCabe's position. Guys are stepping up to play that. Right. And uh, there's a lot of pride there. And uh, when you get hit by those guys, they tend to fumble. And I think our D-line uh, is going to pressure a lot of quarterbacks all year long, and it's one of the strengths of our team. Uh, you mentioned to the Galleon Inquirer, we got some really good D linemen. We thought it would be a strength all year, and tonight we got to see a little bit of that. Landon Kurtzman, as you mentioned, three strip sacks alone. So uh, penalty bug caught you a little bit. 13 penalties, 115 yards. Is that just, again, lack of focus, or is it aggressive mistakes? You know, when we switched quarterbacks, we had a little trouble with the cadence. Um, we had guys that uh, didn't understand when a tight end switches, how to come on and off. Again, I think it just comes down to practice. We need practice, and we do rotate two quarterbacks. So that makes the offense just naturally more complex, even though it's not, you know. Uh, so we're still working all those kinks out um, and, and finding the right blend to play everybody. We're still working on, you know, who, how many plays does Gabe Ivey play before Logan Shifley comes in? How many plays does Braxton run before we get Cooper Ken in? Mm -hmm. and, and so on. And I think that's... Uh, we're still working out those kinks, both offense and defense, and when we do a better job arresting people and knowing when to put people in different positions, I think our offense and defense are going to benefit from it. Very good. Take a break here. We'll talk to the young men around the table. We're brought to you in part by Stephen Chuck Keller at Keller Auto Parts, your Napa dealer, Uptown Galleon and Crestline. Dr. Thomas M. Britton at Clubview Vision Center next to the golf course in Bucyrus. Joe Kleiman Associates at the Galleon Office of First Federal Bank of Ohio. First up, Cooper Kent is a junior. We have all juniors, one sophomore tonight, and welcome to the show. How you doing? Oh, very good. Good. A uh, little bit of time at quarterback, right? You and Braxton are kind of trading off depending on situation. When you're not a quarterback, what are you doing on the field? Looking at the iPad. Looking at the iPad. Yeah, okay. watching the plays, watching to see what the defense is doing. So that came into play, what, a couple years now that you're allowed to look at that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. How has it benefited you as a quarterback to be able to see what's going on when you're not out there when the pressure's on? It allows me to see what coverages the DBs are in, and I can see what we're what they're doing when we're switching tight ends or if we're motioning people, what kind of coverages they go into, if they're man or zone or anything like that. In a situation like that, when you see something, do you talk to your offensive coordinator and say, hey, listen, I can see this right here. We need to run this because of the way that they're reacting. Yeah, we do sometimes. Sometimes we agree on it, sometimes we don't. Um, Week one, Macomb, I actually called my own touchdown. I don't know if anybody yeah, told you that. Gave you credit for that. Well, good for you. What, what did you call? Um, it was Eastern switch, 200 hitch and go. So we switched the tight end from a pro position to a comp position on the line, and then it got man on man on the side. Oh. You know, I got Braxton open to get that. Okay. Uh, well, good for you. Yeah. yeah, that's really great. Are you playing defensively then too? Uh, no. Not just <laughs> staying on the offensive <laughs> side. Yeah, I'm the long snapper. Too. You're long snapper. Well, that's important. Hey, you got, hey that's part of it too. So, uh, well, good luck to you. I, I, that's really fascinating. I, I knew that the iPad came in, and I hadn't really talked to anybody about it. You gave gave great insight, so I really appreciate that. Good luck this week. Thank you. Gabe Ivey's next, and. Uh, 
quite a, a, a game last week at Upper Sandusky. Congratulations on that. Uh, just feeling it, huh? Yeah. Good. Felt good, felt strong. Uh, catching the ball, running the ball. That was a surprise. What's that? That was a surprise. That happened. Oh, that just kind of happened. 89 yards. Uh, and that's late in the game. You must have still had some left in the tank to be able to do it. And probably knew at that point, hey, this might seal the deal for us. Talk about that a little bit. I just, Coach Shake just pulled the play, and I was like, am I supposed to do this way? He's like, just run the ball. I'm like, okay. I did that. I felt like I needed to go hard for Coop, and I made sure I did that to the last whistle. Yeah, absolutely. Coach talked about the, the line maybe just being off just a little bit, but based on the night that you had, uh, 122 yards, they had to do something right. Tell me about that a little bit. You know, even to do something wrong, there's some big dudes, and when they hit someone, I can get around them. And uh, if they did, they fix a little bit of stuff, maybe I would have got like 150, maybe 200 yards. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Health-wise, feel pretty good after the non-league season, ready to go into MOAC play? Absolutely. Other than the normal dings and the things that you, yeah. the sore and things like that, but otherwise you feel pretty good shape? I'm pretty good. All right. Well, have a good week of practice. Good luck uh, against Mary Hardy this week, sir. You bet. Next up, we have Cohen Fusen, uh, junior as well. And positions you're playing on the team, Cohen? Uh, the wide receiver. Wide receiver. Okay. So your, your boy is getting the balls to you? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And then when you're not targeted, you have an expectation of some things that you have to do that's blocking downfield, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's really important. Like when we throw Chafin, like Niles and Niles, we got a block for him up. So it's, it's a broken play already. Yeah, because now passes really quick passes where you're trying to get someone in space, and then hopefully the other receivers are doing their job. And that's such a fine line where you want to block, but you don't want to grab. Because how many times do you see when you're watching on TV out here, what level? You got a wide receiver out there kind of getting a grasp of jersey, and here comes the yellow hanky out, and you're getting called for holding. Is that something that you guys work on in practice? Uh, yeah, we, we do work on blocking quite a bit and learn how to like do it the right way with our mirror drill. Mm -hmm. so just learn how to stay in front without like grabbing. That's it, and that's not always easy to do because they're trying to get away from you. Are you playing on the defensive side too? Or? I know so. Just offense right now? Yeah. Okay. Mary Hardy coming up. We talked uh, off air, always an athletic team, probably some speed. Probably some physical DBs, maybe? Is it, have you seen that on film? Oh, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they touch up a lot. And, uh, I'm pretty slow, so I just got to be quick off the line. There you go. There you go. Maybe a little hand gesture, get them yeah. get them by and get open. Well, good luck. Enjoy it, and uh, have a good game this week. Next up is Braxton Prosser is a sophomore. Welcome to the show. And uh, sounds like you had a pretty nice game. Have you been happy as a sophomore three weeks in now? Uh, I think I could definitely perform better. What do you have to do to get better? Uh, just practice harder. Practice harder than I've been. Uh, read the defense better. Mm -hmm. Just multiple things I can do better on the field. Has it slowed down for you, though, from where you were in Macomb to where you are now after week three, where when you see what's going on, what the DBs are doing, what the backers are doing, maybe where the blitz is coming from, are you starting to, is it starting to slow down and you're able to process that, process that a little easier now? I mean, a little bit, but I feel like so if something breaks down, you have the green light from coach to just tuck it, run, and, and take off. Always. Okay. If, if you see nothing downfield, if your receivers aren't getting open, protection breaks down, you're you're bold. You're yeah, getting the heck out of here. Okay. You're not afraid to take a lick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Defensively, are you doing anything or just? Uh, I'm an alternate safety. Safety. Yeah, okay. I haven't played defense this year. Yeah. All right, all right. So you're just sticking to what you're doing yeah. right now. All right, all right. Mary Hardy coming up. Uh, sure. What do you think about them? What have you seen on on film from them? Oh, I've watched a little bit of film. Uh, their defense is pretty good, but I think our wide receivers should get get open as they always do. But we just need to come down with the ball. Yeah, just the, the right touch, right? Yeah. All right. Well, good luck this week. Enjoy. And finally, it's uh, Jackson Waters, a junior and position you're playing on the team, Jackson? I'm a defensive end. DN, okay. And uh, sounds like you guys got after it uh, this last week. And, and you probably take a lot of pride in doing that and, and getting to the quarterback, being disruptive. What other responsibilities do you have instead, in, in addition to getting after the quarterback? We just have to go hard and be able to read what we're supposed to be doing in the angles and 
make the way for the offensive plays to go right? You know, I was watching the Ohio State game on Saturday night and angrily saying things in, in the first half as it wasn't going well. But I watched one of their DMs, and as he kind of got pushed out to the side, he deliberately allowed himself to kind of plug that to turn the play back in. Talk about what that means and, and why you guys do that as DMs, why you kind of get that flow to come back towards the middle of the play. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Maybe to turn it back in, get get your linebackers to come rather than allowing it to bump outside. You're kind of preventing that from getting on the outside of the sideline and making yeah. that flow go back in. Yeah. Is that something you're asked to do, or it just kind of happens naturally? That's something we run. Okay. We would, we would perform that. Are you playing offensively as well? I don't play offense. Just defense at this Scout point. Scout right. offense. Scout, <laughs> Scout offense. offense. Okay. And you feel pretty healthy at this point. I uh, do. Okay. I have little dings up and stuff. But yeah. Good. Real good. Well, good luck this week, and uh, have fun Thank for you. sure. Take a break here, and we'll come back, talk to Coach here in just a moment. We're brought to you in part by the Burkhart family at the Burkhart Farm Center, your Case IH dealer, straight west of Galleon on the Manette New Winchester Road. Mike Klein at Ag Credit Residential Lending, Desiris, Mount Gillian, and Marion. Sweet Baby Ray Jones and Kendra Weaver at Ohio Door and Sash, 120 South Street in Galleon. And Mark Osborne at Ecrane International Route 598 at the North Edge of Galleon. Before we get to this week, JV, freshman, junior high, how is things progressing at those levels? I think our junior high is all undefeated, and freshmen are yet to play a game. River Valley canceled on us, so uh, I think their first game will be Monday. It's harder and harder to find freshman games, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it, we, we have a lot of freshmen are playing JV and varsity, some too, so it's a wide mix, so we don't pick up too many extra ones, but we got some coming. Would you rather play your freshman up on a Saturday morning in the, in the JV a little faster, a little quicker game, or would you rather them have their own game with equal grade kids? Yeah, I'd love for them all to play freshmen. Uh, we just haven't had the, the depth to be able to do that. And we've had some uh, pretty special freshmen that have come up and been able to play as good as the juniors or seniors, and we needed them. So, yeah. uh, uh, but at Dream World, they just play freshmen. Yeah, I understand that. Week four, done with the non-league, into the MOAC. Does that mean more to you as a coach that, yeah, it's nice to play these non-league games and you played a really tough schedule with McComb and Carey and Upper? Does it mean more getting into the league because league championship is on the line, or is it just who's ever on my schedule next? You know, I think every week we're trying to go one and out. And if we could block out what good and what bad we did last week and learn from it, but block out the positive or the negative, because it doesn't really matter. Marion Hurd doesn't care if we beat up or lost up, or right. uh, just trying to go one and out at the end of this week, I think is definitely our focus. But I also think, you know, if you think about legacies and you think about, you know, being remembered, uh, winning a conference title is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've come close and, and not quite got it done. And I can tell you that stuff still haunts me. So I, I'm definitely a big believer in winning conference titles. Uh, but how you do that is one week at a time. Yeah, for sure. And you have Marion Harding coming uh, to your place this week. Dave Hart, uh, who was the interim coach, has, well, not interim, he is the coach, but it was a late change where their head coach uh, had left and, and he didn't have much time to prep. He was on the staff. Uh, they're currently 0-3. They got, dropped a tough one last week to Newark, 28-21. to They're averaging just over 16 points a game. They're giving up about 35. It's a team you beat last year, or you, excuse me, you lost to last year, 24-15. to you know they're going to be talented. You know that they're going to have some great athletes. What have you seen from them on film that uh, you have to be aware of on Friday night? You know, I think offensively, I think their quarterback does a nice job with the ball. Their running back might be the best player in the MOAC, or if not, he's in the in the conversation. He, he's very, very explosive, talented. I think their O line's young, struggles at times, but they are big. Uh, mm -hmm. I was impressed when I actually saw a roster how tall their tackles and stuff are. I mean, we're talking 6'4", 270 on both sides, so that, that's kind of neat to see. But definitely talented, uh, and that running back is special kid. Defensively, uh, like they play a lot of guys. I mean, their D-line, I've seen probably, you know, it seems like 15 guys rotate in there, and some are, are really scary, and some, you know, are just resting guys, uh, but they do a nice job of playing a lot of kids, which uh, allows them to be fresh in the fourth quarter, uh, and, and there's been some linebackers that rotated as well, and I, I don't know if that's because, you know, kids are hurt, or kids, you know, who, who knows what the reason is, but it seems like there's been a lot of different movement on their defense, so we'll see this week who's out there. Uh, they, they got some special kids, and uh, they, their coach does a nice job putting them in good position, and we're at to play well. And I think momentum is a huge uh, deal when you play Marion Harding or anybody in MOS. If you can still momentum in the first half, uh, usually that's a good thing. So that's what we're going to try to do. Very good. Well, wish you the best of luck and uh, enjoy being at home. It's always great to play home rather than going on the road. It looks like uh, 
pretty nice weather, not too hot or anything along that line. It's not expecting any rain, so enjoy your night, and uh, we'll talk about that next week and on to week five, almost halfway through the regular season. So I appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. You bet. Take a break. Come back. Jake Bruner and the Colonel Crawford Eagles right after this timeout. <laughs>